Welcome pre-cal students to the homework help video. Uh, let's go ahead and get started. Let's start first of all with numbers 27 through 31 on 27, 29, and 31. Uh, number 20, the directions say uh, for 27, 29, and 31 to use the given function values and trig identities to find each of the given trig functions. So, um, for example, for letter A right here, we're trying to find the tangent of 60. Normally, we could look on our tables that you guys have, and we could look up the tangent of 60, but they're not letting us do this. Uh, so on a test or a quiz, <clears throat> I would look for work. Okay, you're going to have to show work on these, and you're going to have to use trig identity. So we're trying to find the tangent of 60. And so what you have to realize right away is the tangent of 60 equals <clears throat> the sine of 60 over the cosine of 60. You'll see that in your trig identities. This is tangent of theta equals uh, sine of theta over cosine of theta. Okay? And so tangent of 60 equals sine of 60 over cosine of 60. Sine of 60 is square root of 3 over 2. Cosine of 60 is 1 half. So what we really have is square root of 3 over 2 divided by one half, okay? Which of course really means um, the square root of three over two times two over one. And your twos would cancel. And square root of three times one is square root of three. And one times one is one. So your answer is square root of three, okay? Uh, let's go ahead and move on to letter B. Uh, letter B says we're gonna find the sine of 30. Now, listen to me very carefully, students, okay? <clears throat> We have identities called cofunction identities. And sine and cosine go together in cofunction identities. Secant and cosecant go together. And tangent and cotangent when you're talking about cofunction identities. So when we're dealing when we're trying to find the sine of 30, remember the sine of 30 is its cofunction identity. <clears throat> as long as the two angles add up to 90. So the sine of 30 equals the cosine of 60, okay? And so the cosine of 60 is 1 half, so the sine of 30 equals 1 half, okay? Please don't forget that. Whenever this number here and this number here add up to 90, if the two functions are cofunctions of each other, then they will equal each other, okay? Uh, so the answer to the sine of 30 is 1 half. All right, let's go on to letter C, cosine of 30. Well, students, look what we have. The cosine of 30 equals, now the cofunction of cosine is sine, and 30 plus 60 equals 90, so the cosine of 30 equals the sine of 60. And we see right up here the sine of 60 is square root of 3 over 2. So the cosine of 30 equals square root of 3 over 2. All right, moving on to letter D, cotangent of 60. Now remember, we have a trig identity that states cotangent equals cosine over sine. So the cotangent of 60 equals the cosine of 60 over the sine of 60. All right, so for the cosine of 60, we know that's 1 half, and for the sine of 60, we know that is square root of 3 over 2. So we really have 1 half divided by square root of 3 over 2, which of course is the same thing as uh, 1 half times 2 over square root of 3. Your 2 would cancel into your 2. 1 times 1 is 1. 1 times square root of 3 is square root of 3. And if you rationalize, <clears throat> if you rationalize the denominator, um, you'll get square root of 3 over 3. Okay? And there we go. That's number 27A through D. Alright, let's go ahead and continue on through to number 29. Okay, number 29, we're trying to find the sine of theta. Now remember, sine is the reciprocal of cosecant. Okay? So in other words, if we're trying to find the sine of theta, and we know the cosecant of theta, they're reciprocals of each other. So if the cosecant of theta is square root of 13 over 2, then the sine of theta would be 2 over 
the square root of 13. So we're going to multiply the top and the bottom by the square root of 13, and your answer would be 2 square root of 13 over 13. Okay, that's letter A. Letter B, we're trying to find the cosine of theta. Now remember, cosine is the reciprocal of secant. So if the secant of theta is square root of 13 over 3, then the cosine of theta would be 3 over square root of 13. If we rationalize the denominator, we're going to get 3 square root of 13 over 13. Okay? Uh, let's take a look at tangent. Now, actually, I shouldn't have erased these answers. That was probably not a very smart thing to do. Let's go back here real quick. There we go. Let's go ahead and write these up here. So sine uh, was 2 square root of 13 over 13. Okay? And then cosine was 3 square root of 13 over 13. All right? And the reason that's important, students, is in letter C here, we're trying to find the tangent of theta. Well, remember, tangent equals what? Sine over cosine. And we know the sine of theta is this, and we know the cosine of theta is this. So really, for sine of theta, I'm going to put 2 square root of 13 over 13. And for cosine of theta, I'm going to put 3 square root of 13 <coughs> over 13. So we have 2 square root of 13 over 13 times, and I'm going to go ahead and flip this bottom fraction. It'll be 13 over 3 square root of 13. All right, so this will cancel, this will cancel, your square root of 13s will cancel with your square root of 13s, and 2 times 1 is 2, 1 times 1 is 1, so your answer would be 2 for letter C right here. And I'm back, students. Sorry, I did make a mistake. I thought that didn't look right, so I paused, and I checked the answer key. And what I didn't see is this 3 right here. So uh, 2 times 1 is 2, and 1 times 3 is 3. The answer is 2 thirds, okay? <clears throat> Sorry about that, 2 thirds. Okay, letter D. Now listen carefully, students. Um, when you have secant of... 90 minus theta, this is right off of your trig identity sheet. If you'll look at your trig identity sheet, you will see secant of 90 minus theta equals cosecant of theta. And also, by the way, the cosecant of 90 minus theta equals the secant of theta. All right, so anyways, what we're trying to, what we're trying to solve for here is the secant of 90 minus theta. And notice it equals the cosecant of theta. And here's the cosecant of theta right here, square root of 13 over 2. So secant of 90 minus theta is square root of 13 over 2. That's letter D. Okay? All right, moving on to the next problem here that we have. Number 31. Okay, students, here we go. We're going to use the cosine of this angle here equals one-third and we're going to start off with secant. Now remember uh, secant is the reciprocal of cosine so if the cosine of your unknown angle is one-third then the secant of that one known angle would be one-third flipped which is three over one or just three so that's pretty simple. Okay letter B sine of this missing angle. Now remember we know what cosine is okay but we don't know what sine is. So right away, I remember this trig identity right here. Uh, sine squared of an angle plus cosine squared of that same angle equals 1. So I'm going to put sine squared plus, and now look carefully, cosine squared of this angle. Well, cosine is 1 third, so I'm going to put 1 third and then square it equals 1. So next, I would have sine squared plus one ninth. One times one is one, and three times three is nine equals one. Next, I'm going to bring the one ninth over and make it a negative one ninth. And if I do that correctly, I will get sine squared equals 
eight ninths, one minus one ninth is eight ninths, and now I'm going to take the square root of both sides. Now, if I take the square root of sine squared, I will just get sine. And if I take the square root of eight ninths, I will have the square root of eight over the square root of nine. So that's really your answer. But but students notice we can do some simplifying, okay? So here we go. Square root of eight over square root of nine. First of all, uh, let's talk about the numerator. Eight can be broken down into four times two. And then we cross off the four. The square root of four is two. Now the denominator, we know the square root of nine is just three. So we end up with two square root of two all over three. Okay, and that would be your answer for letter B. I put that right up here. And moving on, letter C. Now as soon as I see letter C and I realize we're looking for cotangent, I remember that cotangent equals cosine over sine. Okay, so cotangent equals, do I know cosine? Sure, Cos cosine of this angle is one-third. And do I know the sine of this unknown angle? Sure, it's right here. The sine of this angle is 2 square root of 2 all over 3. Okay? So I'm going to take 1 third times, and then I'm going to go ahead and flip this fraction. So it's 3 over 2 square root of 2. And your 3's would cancel. And you're left with 1 over 2 square root of 2. Now, that's a really good answer, okay? However, it does need to be simplified, okay? So we're going to have to rationalize the denominator. We're going to have to multiply the top and the bottom by square root of 2. Okay? All right, 1 times square root of 2 is square root of 2. And 2, don't forget, it's the square root of 2. Don't forget, students, there's a 1 on the outside here. So 2 times 1 is 2. And the inside numbers times themselves, 2 times 2 is 4. So really what we have is 2 times the square root of 4, and the square root of 4 is 2. So I really have 2 times 2, which is 4. So my final answer will be square root of 2 over 4. <clears throat> now, a very common mistake that students make is to reduce these two numbers here. But listen to me, students. This number here is an inside number. It's under a radical, and this number here is an outside number it's not under a radical. You cannot reduce inside numbers with outside numbers, okay? So this is as far as we can go, and this comes right up here. And now we have one left, and let me fix that real quick. There we go, and here we go. All right, the sine of 90 minus this unknown angle equals the co-function And the cofunction for sine is cosine. And so, what is the cosine of this missing angle? Well, cosine of this angle is one-third. So, sine of 90 minus this angle is one-third. And so, the answer to letter D is one-third. Okay? Moving on to the next problems. Okay, we're looking at numbers 57, 59, and 61. Now, the directions for these problems uh, state to verify these trig identities, okay? Um, I'm going to read the directions exactly. Let's see, I'm turning over to the page now. It says, um, use trig identities to transform the left side into the right side. So here we go. <clears throat> we want to use trig identities to do some manipulations to this left side over here. And when we're all done... Uh, making substitutions and simplifying, we should end up with 1 equals 1, okay? So let's see here, what can I do? Well, first of all, I realize that tangent is the same thing as sine over cosine. And I also realize that cotangent is the same thing as cosine over sine, okay? And I'm multiplying. And so this would cancel with this. Sine would cancel with sine. And 1 times 1 is 1, 1 times 1 is 1, 1 over 1 is 1. So I end up with 1 equals 1, okay? Number 59, let's see what, let's see what we can do here. Um, for tangent, for tangent, I can substitute sine over cosine. 
times and then for cosine here I'm just going to put cosine over 1 and let's see what happens okay so I'm manipulating the left side over here well cosine is going to cancel with cosine sine times 1 would be sine 1 times 1 is 1 and sine over 1 equals sine which equals this side right over here all right there we go moving on to number 61 all right the, fir the first thing I would recommend that you do is I would multiply these two parentheses together so you take you take your one right here and you multiply it through the other parentheses so one times one is one and one times negative cosine is negative cosine so one minus cosine and then you take your cosine theta and you multiply it through the parentheses so uh, cosine times one would be positive cosine and cosine times a negative cosine would be negative cosine squared theta and all of that should equal sine squared theta now you should notice you have a negative cosine and a positive cosine they're going to cancel out so you're left with one minus cosine squared theta equals sine squared theta now remember we have a trig identity that says <clears throat> sine squared plus cosine squared equals one so do you see this one right here I can substitute for one sine squared plus cosine squared because sine squared plus cosine squared equals one so I'm going to get rid of this one I'm going to try to get rid of this one if I can there we go and in place of that one I'm going to put sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta and now if you'll look students you have a positive cosine squared and a negative cosine squared they're going to cancel out leaving you with sine squared theta equals sine squared theta okay and that's it for this homework video help video i hope this has been a help to you call or email if you have any questions